Greetings and salutations, loyal list of loyal viewers. My name is Sean, and thank you to all of you who are congratulating me based on my performance on Tim Pool's new show, Culture War, where I debated Emma Vigland. And yes, I was amazing and stunning and brave and beautiful, even though there were some tough moments. I wasn't sure how I was going to react to that very specific moment that you're thinking of in your head. And of course, I'm shooting this video before that debate happened, so you know, whatever, I'm just trying to keep my schedule while I travel, but thank you so much for your support, I really, truly, and honestly appreciate how much you guys loved it, really good the description, wow, 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 what, what a great performance by me. Today we're going to talk about a brazen series of car burglaries that actually targeted 40 cars in an apartment complex, and even resulted in these criminals breaking into police cars because yes they are that brazen crime is getting that crazy and we need to talk about it but before we get into any of that i just want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over my website actualjusticewarrior.com slash join get early access to the secret video page where you could watch videos early access i said that uh oh, give me the money give you give me the money Okay. And thank you to my podcast listeners over on Apple, Spotify, and Google's podcasting platform. But first and new at five, a group of bold thieves breaks into nearly 40 cars at a Conyers apartment complex overnight. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Tom Haynes. I'm Courtney Bryant. Tonight we have video of the suspects on the move. So first thing is first, and I need to make this clear to all of you guys out there in the audience, because I know for a fact that a good percentage, I want to say upwards of 90% of you are thinking it. One, I am not the father of this baby. I do not know who the father of this baby is because this man is the closest man in proximity. I'm going to assume it is him. However, I am told that people who work at local news actually do in fact leave the studio from time to time and they have families of their own, even though I have not verified this information. Hey there, guys. Yeah, that was most concerning to police at first. They say that they made off with two of these uh, bulletproof vests, with one with SWAT, the other with police on it. But now, the second thing that I need to address, and again, you're all thinking it. This time, it's upwards of 99% is that this man kind of looks like Nuance Bro, but if he were a white guy in whatever state that this story is taking place in. However, me being Sean Fitzgerald, the actual justice warrior, the greatest YouTube man in the history of all YouTube men, know that this is not, in fact, white Nuance Bro. This is, in fact, what happens when you fuse Nuance Bro and Lauren Chen's husband, Liam, into one person. And now that you guys can see the combination, you can't unsee it, and now we can move into the meat and potatoes and vegetables of this story. The, they say that the thieves got in under this gate, sliding under, finding their way and breaking in to nearly 40 cars. Now, as you can see, this is an incredibly brazen robbery that took place and nuanced Liam right here is breaking it down. He even brought a prop, isn't local news goofy. And if you watch the surveillance video, you can actually see this crime being captured by this break-in crew that were in and out relatively quickly. The police knocked on the door at 3.30 to say, your car has been broken into. And we're like, what? What? So this woman right here is our main character of this episode because I absolutely love everything about her, except for the fact that her and her husband are in their 80s and they are driving this killing machine pickup truck at their advanced age. But just in case you were wondering about whether or not these criminals were poor, sad Aladdins who just aren't victimizing anybody but the rich, there were in fact elderly people being victimized by these criminals and you have an 80 plus year old couple that now have to deal with the fact that their car window was smashed in order to get their property, which by the way, when you find out what was actually inside the vehicle is just going to make you sad. You can just hear the anger in the voice of one of the 37 victims who live at the village at Almond Creek Apartments. She didn't want her name out there, but she says her and her husband are in their 80s and this is the last thing they need. Why? We have nothing. You broke into a car that has three canes. What do you think is, who do you think is in there? Now, Nuance Liam described this woman as angry and you could hear the anger in her voice. But honestly, what I detect from her is a lot of frustration. She points out the fact that they had three canes in this vehicle. And if you would have just looked through the window before smashing it, you would have known that this car belonged to an elderly couple, regardless of the fact 
that they just got this vehicle new. There was nothing of value inside it, so all these criminals ended up doing was creating hardship for this elderly couple who likely bought this truck because these trucks are actually quite nice on the inside as a luxury in their advanced age. She says they just bought this truck two weeks ago. And then you're stupid enough to break into a policeman's car? Are you crazy? True. They are in fact stupid enough to break into a police vehicle. That is how brazen these criminals have gotten at this period of time and how dangerous these criminals actually are because, you know, a lot of people are going to argue that, oh, they're just in poverty. They're only breaking into cars because of the hardship on their own lives as if that makes it okay. Okay, but obviously, if they were breaking into a police vehicle, what they were actually looking to steal was likely firearms, and that is likely so they can commit further crimes in the future. We've seen multiple different times where these supposedly non-violent criminals who are looking to commit crimes without people seeing them end up being confronted by somebody and they either severely beat, shoot, or kill in some other way the person trying to confront them or stop them while they're trying to commit a crime. Oftentimes, what we find out is these criminals are in fact dangerous. They're just choosing temporarily a path of least resistance. But if you were to confront them, then you could be critically injured. If this old lady were to have spotted them breaking into her brand new car, then they likely would have hurt this elderly woman because these people have no regard, obviously, for the property of others. And that often extends to no regard for the lives of others. Again, they saw three canes in this vehicle and they still smashed through the car window in order to go through the glove box and all kinds of things in order to find something of value. These are not kind-hearted Aladdins that were just looking to feed their starving children those three elderly people's canes. These are people looking for some quick cash. It's obviously an organized group. You can see how many of them are there looking for vulnerable targets, vulnerable people so that they could prey on those people. One of our patrol vehicles, it was a unmarked criminal investigations division detective's vehicle um, that had police um, equipment inside of it. Connors police say per department policy, thankfully the detective didn't leave any guns in the Car. The thieves, who they say is this group caught on video making a getaway, did take two bulletproof vests with police and SWAT markings. Okay, so just to clarify, I did say it was marked because for some reason they're showing marked police cars all over this segment, but that's a brain cramp in my regard. It actually was an unmarked vehicle. However, it did have police insignified different things in the vehicle that would have been in plain sight. And they brazenly broke in, they stole the bulletproof vest, and this potentially could have led to a situation where these people posed as police officers in order to commit crimes against people in the future. Now, we are about to hear that fortunately that will not happen for the reasons that will be laid out, but I just want you to think about the fact that these people are just smashing up every single car in an apartment complex. Everybody's being victimized right here, regardless of the fact that if you're making a police salary in this specific area, you're likely not that well off. You're likely not doing well. You're living amongst the retirees. The median income for Conyers, Georgia, where this took place, which was the Conyers apartment complex, is $29,000 a year. So the people who are living in these apartments, they're not owning homes, are likely not your wealthy participants in society and these car window break-ins plus the lost property represent some significant losses to them. They were dumped inside of a trash can in the county and a citizen, a good Samaritan, called us and said, hey, we found Vez. But cops say the group did find a gun in another car among a bunch of other valuables. Now the vests, like I said, were returned, but of course you heard it for yourself. They did find a firearm in somebody else's vehicle. By the way, don't leave your firearm in your vehicle unattended. And they got away with that. Again, just going to show you that these people are looking to do some serious damage. And they did, in fact do some serious damage already in this apartment complex. They damaged a significant portion of this apartment complex's vehicles in here in pursuit of valuables, and they got a lot of stuff from other people's places, and considering this is an area that has some security mechanisms, I understand why people were lacking a little bit in caution on what they left in their cars. But again, you have 37 victims in this complex, including a cop, and you know as well as I do that if they do catch these individuals at some point in time in the future, what we're going to find out 
is the fact that they've done this before. This was an organized hit. They likely have criminal records. They might even be underage. And because we're talking about an area in Georgia, and because we have all of these incentives put forward for soft on crime, soft prosecutions, and all of that, I wouldn't be surprised if they were cut break after break, if some of these people were on probation or parole, and they had violations that ultimately were not enforce against them and that led them to be able to commit these crimes this many people in this organized of a crew attacking this many cars this is not something that they just started doing on this apartment complex as their first hit get off your lazy behinds and be a parent you don't know where your kids are at three o'clock in the morning how shameful on you this old lady is an absolute boss in every possible way. She's calling out the parents. She's calling out everybody. You know, if you're not aware of this, when they interview people for the local news, they often interview them for like 30 minutes. There's hits and bangers in the full footage. I demand the release of the full cut of this old lady going in, going ham against these kids that looted her entire parking lot of her apartment complex because we need more of her. We need her to be the president of this condo apartment association i'm sure they don't even have apartment associations and likely we need to arm the neighborhood watch and have her take down these criminals with her three canes that also convert into some kind of advanced weaponry and maybe just maybe i'm just running out of things to say so i am talking repeatedly in the hopes that you are entertained but yeah it's a tragic story and again likely what we're going to find out is that this is the result of a series of failures in the criminal justice system, failures amongst the parents that led us to the point where all of these people are victimized. Let's go back to Nuance Liam so he can close us out, give us something to take home, and he better not fail on this. Mm, she, she could just hear the frustration in that woman's voice. Now, police tell us they do have some solid leads, including a potential getaway car description, but the suspects remain at large. So the police actually have some leads in this situation, including their getaway car description. I'm just going to say it's either a Kia or a Hyundai. What I've learned from a lot of these stories being covered on this channel is that oftentimes these criminals will start out by stealing those very easily to steal vehicles, and they'll use that to perpetuate further crimes. On top of that, I just want to point out that I spotted a tattoo on Nuance Liam's arm. I am not a big fan of tattoos, and I'm highlighting that for you guys out there in the audience, and I'm hoping that this guy gets his life together. I'm hoping he either marries an Asian female YouTuber and or does whatever Nuance Bro does, because honestly, I don't understand what's going on in that man's life, but you should subscribe to his channel because he uploaded a video recently, and it's actually pretty good. Also, both are friends of the channel, so subscribe subscribe to Lauren Chen, do all the things. I'm such a good promoter of other people and working them into the story so I can include them into the tag so I could fool the algorithm into thinking they're a part of this. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, you can show them by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can follow me on all your social medias. Link in the description. This has been me talking about a story that I already forgot what it was. Till next time.